Hey everybody, JJ here. Back again. This is a Saturday Zoom call. And man, I'm really excited about this call. Um I'm in the sub two community. Uh it's Pace Morby sub two community. You guys have heard me mention Pace many, many times. Uh Pace Morby has created sub two. It's the premier real estate education program in the country, bar none. I'm in three or four. Um, they're all good. But what Pace has put together is phenomenal. And what makes Seb2 phenomenal are the young people that are in Seb2 that have followed Pace's lead and are are uh, setting their own path and blazing their own trails. And our guest speaker today is one of these guys. He's been a student. He's now a teacher. He's a leader of the community. He's a businessman. He's an entrepreneur. Um, and he's a role model. And uh, he's a heck of a great guy. But I want to introduce my good friend, Jameson Williams. Jameson, how are you, brother? I'm doing good, man. Thanks for having me. Oh, man, it's a pleasure to have you. It's a pleasure to have you here. Hey, um, let me ask you, man. I want to, I want to get to know you a little bit. For those yep. that don't know you, now, as I recall, you do real estate all over the country. But where are you personally, uh, where where do you call home base? Yeah, so um, I, uh, I'm i in both Vegas and, and Phoenix. Those are the two areas that, uh, you know, I'm back and forth to. Um, so yeah, that's, that, that's what I'm calling home base right now. That's great. Um, let me ask you when, when you grew up, where did you, where do you, where were you in your high school years? Uh, high school years, man, I moved around, man. My dad has a corporate job. So, um, really from Akron to Cincinnati, uh, the Ohio area. Yep. Just moving all around Ohio. Okay. So, you know, when you were in your teens, prior to college or whatever, those, those 20 years, years yeah. in the twenties. Um, did you have always have an interest in real estate or, or what, what was your, what were your interests before real estate? Did it, was it something that's always been there or did, did, did you, how, how'd you get into real estate? What, what was your start? Yeah. So, I mean, the way I got into real estate was, you know, I graduated college, um, beginning of the pandemic, uh, graduate college at the beginning of the pandemic, uh, with a degree in finance and computer information systems. Um, so, uh, my, my original goal was to, you know, do, do something in the sports world, um, whether that be like an agent or something like that, um, or, you know, start up a company. Um, I always had entrepreneurial goals. Um, so, you know, coming out of college, you know, I tried to raise some, raise some funds, uh, pandemic happened. People were a little bit tighter. Um, and I stumbled on the real estate. Um, I figured this is the way that I would be able to, um, have a start for my businesses and be able to, you know get a better idea on on how to raise capital. I know how to do that well now. And then uh also how to how to operate a business. Um that's really what got me uh over to, you know, purchasing Kiwi franchises. Wow, that that's that's awesome. I mean, it's really really impressive and I I'm a little bit familiar with your growth. What was your foray into real estate education as an investor? Yeah, so um, kind of getting back to that original story, um, you know, like I said, I, I didn't really know how to raise money or how to get any money. Uh, I was in college, pandemic happened, um, and I was kind of just trying to figure out how I can make the most money like, as possible um, quickly. Um, and then, uh, you know, I was scrolling on Instagram one day and I saw a buddy of mine. He posted a check for like fourteen thousand dollars. and I was like, wow, like that was like amazing for me to see at that time. Um and I reached out to him. I was like, hey, man, like, how'd you do this? Um, and he ended up telling me um, his deal was actually like a creative finance deal where he uh, brought the terms to an empire um, and his assignment fee was 14000 uh, Um, So I was like, wow, if he could do this, like, I know it's possible for me to do it as well. So from that point on, you know, YouTube University um, and then, you know, uh, ended up, you know, going into me purchasing, you know, Astro Flipping and then Sub2 as well. Um, really just trying to understand the material and, uh, you know, dive deep. Now, you mentioned Keegley. For those that aren't aware enough, you got the Keegley hat on. Tell us about yeah. Keegley. What, what, what's Keegley? Yeah, so Keegley is a um, Keegley's a wholesaling franchise. Um, so we primarily wholesale, um, build up our teams, um, and then, you know, go into different markets. Um, now I currently own, uh, I'm in two, I'm in two to three different markets, um, Vegas, um, Cleveland, and then Columbus area. 
So um, those are like the areas that my team and I are focusing on right now. What was your original market? Where did you start? Or were you always in two right off the bat? Or where was no, no, no. So so I started I started in uh, Cleveland, Ohio. Um, really like that Canton area was where I got my first deal. Anybody familiar with Ohio? Um, got my first deal, Canton, and then I realized for me to have more success, I needed to go to a population like an area that had a larger population. Um, because you know I was doing deals in that area that I was in, but you know the, the population, the metro population wasn't that high. Um, so I realized that, you know, the Cleveland was, uh, you know, a couple million. Um, so I figured I could do more damage there and be able to have more success. So, um, you know, I, I, I dove deep, um, not wide. Um, when I first started off, I was almost in every single market, but I, like, I come to, came to realize that you gotta be, um, you gotta be really intentional on that, on your direction that you want to go. Uh, so I, uh, I slimmed it down and I got to just to focus in on that Cleveland market, um, saw some success, saw some success there. Um, had an opportunity to um, buy out uh, an existing franchise in a, in, a, in a Las Vegas market, which was sold out. Um, was able to buy a guy out, and then we've had having some success success over there as well now. Now, was your first operation in Canton that went to Cleveland? Was that a Keegley? No, 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 no. Starting so, on your own. Yeah, yeah, that that was just by myself. Um, so I've been wholesaling for about two years now. Um, I started and I had a franchise for about you know, a month in, I mean, a, a year in a couple months. Um, so I started, I started wholesaling. Um, and then I gained some traction. I started make, making some money and then I had a decent amount of money stacked up and I kind of, I was trying to really figure out, um, what would be the next best move if it were to be to start buying and, you know, buying properties and doing flips, which I do now. Um, but I thought at that time, the best move for me, um, was to, buy into an organization that had, you know, mentorship, leadership from, you know, the top guys doing it. And then at the same time, being able to um, really understand how to operate a business um, so that I could take that on to my other endeavors uh, later, later on in life. So um, that's what I've been able to do, been able to, you know, understand how to operate a business at a high level, um, SOPs, um, and, you know, working on building, building the team and, taking this bigger and bigger man that's that's so fantastic i love to hear that i love to see the success uh you're you're, you're awesome uh, you're very very impressive so let me ask you um i've heard keegley mentioned in hand in hand with jameel damji yeah 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 so Jam tell, jameel, tell me how, how, how have you met jameel yeah, yeah, yeah. jameel's a jameel's a good friend uh great guy great guy so he's uh he's actually my business partner now because he owns um the the name Keegley and you know the headquarters are in Arizona so he owns that um and I I bought I bought a couple of his franchises from him um so we have a great relationship great guy and uh, even better person yeah I, I've had the honor to meet him a couple times and just a great guy oh my gosh just great heart great personality he's the kind of guy like I use your brother your cousin your uncle you just want to give him a hug and just love it he, uh, yeah just love him man. You started in Ohio, and then did you physically move to Vegas? Is that what it was? No, or did so, you move to Arizona because that's where Keegley is. Yeah, so so yeah, so I'm back and forth, but I have a have a partner um, who helps operate uh, both both of our franchises now. Um, so he's out there in Phoenix, and my team operates virtually out of Phoenix um, in the Vegas market. So, what was it like, you know, as a young man, you know, out of college? Getting involved yeah. in real estate, putting your team together. What does your what does your team consist of today? Say your Ohio team. Yeah, yeah. So it's about four and four guys on each side. I'm um, working to build that. <laughs> working to working to build that up. Um, but we have acquisition guys and our disposition guys on the properties as well. Um so uh yeah, that's that's a bit of what my team looks like today. Fantastic. Now are these people that you interviewed or did you meet them across the way or are these friends? Uh, yeah, these how, how are people, those relationships develop. Yeah, these are people that I've interviewed. Uh, my team's my team and I have interviewed, um, and we were able to source those people. Um, uh, for me, for me, like figuring out how to hire people, that was one of my biggest challenges. Um, that I've recently, um, like uh, been able to figure out. Um, because I kept getting the same guys and firing them, same guys, and you know, possibly having to let them go or they wouldn't make sense. And um. You know, just able to figure out how to eliminate that just by some processes of hiring, you know, you know, the little things that I'm doing to 
you know, really make sure that I'm getting somebody that's committed, understand how it goes. Um, it wants, you know, has goals for itself as well. And as well as just, uh, you know, putting in a great, like, uh, you know, having a great culture that helps a lot as well. And, you know, when you're seeing guys make money, it, you know, it only makes you want to make more money as well. Yeah, no, that, that's fantastic. So, um, let me ask you, you know, you, I'm, I'm sure that, uh, from where I see you going and you're very, very visible and you're, you're highly respected within the sub community. I mean, we were introduced because I bought a house in Ohio. I started in Ohio, in Cleveland. I live yeah. in LA. I, said, I, I want to find more properties in Cleveland. Who, who should I talk to? People are like, talk to Jameson. <laughs> That's what <laughs> people talk to Jameson. So we're going to have to follow up with that, with that conversation. But, yeah, um, you know, as, as you've grown and as you become successful, um, what are you doing for fun, man? What, what I mean, you still, I'm sure you got to, I mean, you, you're creating great relationships with people like Jamil. I'm sure the guys on your team are people that are your friends. You feel really good about hanging out and doing stuff. So when you get yeah. time for you, what what's your thing? What do you like to do? Uh, man, you know, I like to give back, you know, today's, uh, you know, close to the holidays. So I was handing out some turkeys earlier. Um, and just helping others, man. Uh, you know, I mean, my job every day is really talking to wholesalers as well. So, I'm, I mean, I'm always helping somebody, but i um, really just trying to give back and see how I can elevate others. Because um, I know that, you know, it always comes back. So if I can help others, you know, figure out real estate, um, walk in that door of real estate, you know, the drug of real estate, million ways to make money, which is a great thing. But there's a million make money, million ways to make money as well. So it's a bad thing as well. So, you know, just helping people find direction. Um, and then, you know, with, the, with Astra as well, I, ho I host a couple calls on that as well to, you know, help people find direction. And, uh, yeah, I like hanging out with my friends as well. And, um, you know, being around like-minded individuals, so I think that's the biggest. You're, you're a good looking young guy, brother. Are you, are you married? Do you have a kids, family, siblings? <laughs> nope. No kids yet. Um, girlfriend for several years. Um, hopefully married within the next couple. Um, but yeah, so just, just a girlfriend. Um, and you know, that's how we're living right now. Fantastic brother. And, uh, so does she like to travel? I know women like to travel. Is she a traveler? Yeah. <laughs> we, we travel all the time, <laughs> wherever, wherever I go somewhere, she's usually somewhere close. Now, have you been out of the country much? Uh, I haven't been out to the, out of the country. I mean, just to like the Caribbean islands, you know, Aruba, you know, stuff like that. That's beautiful. Um, I've been to Aruba. Been, yeah, Aruba's a great place. I've been uh, planning on getting out the country here soon, but, you know, just with the team and uh, running a business right now, I mean, I would say I'm still self-employed. I wouldn't necessarily uh, call it a business yet because I'm not uh, all the way scaled to where I want to be. So until I get there officially, I probably won't be taking any trips overseas uh, just because it requires a little bit more time. Uh, but once I... um. Once I, once I feel comfortable enough, which will be probably sometime next year, um, I'll, I'll be overseas somewhere. Maybe, now, maybe now, what is yeah. that going to entail? Is that just making the two? You, you've got two Kegley franchises now, right? Uh, three. Three. Yeah. So in the next year, is that just getting each of the three of them more stable? Or do you plan on scaling to like four or five, six? What's, what's your goal with that in the next year, year to two years? Uh, Yeah, I mean, I'm in the process of acquiring another one right now. Um, but what that looks like for me is, I mean, really just having that built out, um, you know, acquisition role, disposition role, um, managers, um, HR guys, um, you know, people that can replace me in that, in the everyday, uh, position, um, and just kind of build, uh, building that out. Um, you know, I've kind of pulled back the curtains a little bit and kind of, uh, cleaned house a little bit to make sure that all of our, uh, you know, programs are working right. And, you know, where we have that right energy um to to move forward one of the one of the people on the call just commented in the chat about your about your instagram so now do, do you do you use instagram a lot um i do um i ha I do have my social media managers that that usually um post like a lot of my stuff for it but i think instagram is a great place to um connect as well which is like other real estate uh investors now do you do a lot of videos at all yeah, I have a I have a decent amount of videos up there. Um, the past couple of weeks I haven't, uh, but I do have a decent amount of videos on my page as well. If anybody wants to go on there, check it out. Yeah, LJ you. Browner, you are on with Jamison Williams. What's your question? Yeah, I just wanted to know. Um, 
for you personally, what makes you want to acquire more Keegley franchises um, instead of using that same capital to do other things in real estate, like purchase up two properties, um, do lending, Airbnb, et cetera? Yeah. So I don't use my money to buy properties. Um, that's why I use other people's money. Uh, and that's what I use for my my private money. Um, I use private money on a lot of my deals, um, whether that's fixing flip, you know, some some buying holds. Just gotta find the right guys. Um, but for me, man, I am in the mode of building a monster. I want to look back on my wholesale business in five to seven years and see I'm making a million of, a million a month easy, um, <clears throat> because I I I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna know what to do with the cash flow. And that's what I want right now, especially in the time that we're in. We're having so many, we're having so many people, um, you know, they're pushing the media so much fear, right? Um, recession, recession, recession. Um, and I would say like over the next 18 months, probably they're going to keep going down, down and down. Um, so my goal is because wholesale is the bottom to master it, not just be an expert, be like, a, you know, really master it. And be able to know, you know, when I go to my office, I know I'm going to have 80 to 100 to 200 people in there that are selling deals every single day, sourcing and selling deals every single every single day. And that's just for me. Right. Everybody's goals are different. But I want I, I, I want to know that I created my wholesale business into a monster and that it's going to produce cash every single day every single day. And I know a lot of guys get out of that wholesale space. That's what I said. It's, it's per person. It's what you want to do. But I know me personally, um, especially like being on a call like this, right? Connecting with more people. I know that maybe this could lead to somebody that wants to invest, right? So if you want to invest in me, we'll invest in some real estate while I continue to build my my wholesale uh, empire. Um, so that's what, you know, wholesale just made so much more, made, made so much sense to me. Just because like, it's cash now. Um, it's cash now, you know, whether it's, you know, 20, 30, 40. But if you build out a team that produces that, your team's going to eat as well, give them great incentives as well. And then that's something that can only keep going, right? Who doesn't want an easy, not going to say it's easy, but who doesn't want an easy 100,000 or, you know, 200,000 or, you know, 10x that, right? In five years, a million a month. Um when, when you already built that and then you can use, you can continue to use some of that money from others as well. Um, but if I have to, I can use that money to buy more stuff as well. Um, so that's more so what it, what it looks like for me as well. And um, I, and just like to be clear, like I'm, I'm buying right now, man, I, I got five flips I'm working on. Um, but the great thing about it is, is I, all those flips, private money, you know, so. Uh, that's the importance of also, you know, get into that creative financing as well, Pace Morby, uh, because you'll learn to leverage others. And I think that's the biggest piece. Justin Kremer, you are on with Jameson Williams. What, what's your question? Thank you for uh, for coming on and spending your time with us, man. It's uh, hugely valuable. Um, I just want to know, because I'm, I'm still in the beginning phases. I'm kind of like where you were, I don't know, like two years ago, um, maybe a little bit maybe a little bit further behind but i'm curious to know what it was like for you maybe describe a little bit what it looked like for you in the beginning um like what you were focused on um and kind of how that how that transition took place for you where you were where you were ready to buy a franchise and and go down that road so i mean starting off man it was a it was a grind like anything else man it was uh you know i had never made any money I, I've just always been pretty, I'm a glass half full type guy. Um, so like I saw somebody do it and I, I automatically knew I could do it. Um, so like for me, man, it was a, it's a journey, bro. Cause sometimes you might not get a deal for a couple months. Um, so, but it's about the hours that you put in, man. I think it with everything, you know, if, you know, I'm not saying that you're working four hours, but I'm just going to do this as a, as a, an example, like it's like, if somebody's working 40 hours, like, can you work 70? I mean, like, I feel like you being a sub two, you have the greatest example of a of a human being working at their highest potential in pace, right? We all see this guy wake up at, you know, 2 a.m. He does everything in, in his in his day. 
Um, so I, what I would do, I mean, for me, it was, you know, seeing guys like that in Jamil. I think the first thing to do, one, is always get that mind right at the beginning of the day. But just really plan it out. Use your calendar. Uh, figure out where are the times where I could, you know, make sure that I'm putting my effort in because it's a day by day thing. You know, I know a lot of guys that are saying, you know, November, November, um, no, November and December are going to be tough months. Right. Because that's when people slow down. But my team's already made six figures in November. So um, it's just I think it's perspective as well. I think uh, the more you can stay consistent in this, um, the easier it gets. Because, I mean, you're going to have things where you fall down, but you got to get back up, you know, failures and stuff like that. But the only way you don't see success in, in when you're wholesaling or pretty much anything is if you stop. Um, everybody's journey is going to be different. Um, yours and mine will be different, right? Maybe you get a deal earlier than I did. But once you get that first check and it's like, you know, 25000 or 10000 not to get comfortable and just continue that continue that keep going keep going and keep going and, and trying to build something with that as well um because i know that anybody can do this business yeah did you have a did you have a w2 like when you when you started like when you uh, worked in w2? so this is actually a little bit different when i started i like the pandemic first happened and i was leaving my college apartment um i was leaving my college apartment and i moved in with my parents for about probably about three to six months. And I would just be in my, just be in my room working every day. Um, I did some things on the side as well, but um, when it came to W2s, I, I didn't have that. Um, Cause I kind of just went all in with like a couple, couple hundred bucks, probably at 1500 bucks to my name, you know, some graduation money. And nice. that's pretty much all that I did. I but I did invest. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I still didn't invest and I took some risk, uh, a lot of risk. So yeah, that's yeah. great. That's yeah, awesome. did I did I answer that question or did I uh, miss it? No, no, that was beautiful, man. That was beautiful. Yeah, I yeah. actually part of it was like I was curious if you if you were focused on like were you doing like direct to agent stuff or talking to sellers directly when you first started? Was it was it mostly direct to agent? I was, I was doing a lot of micro flipping, honestly. Oh, okay. Um, like just trying to find people's deals and trying to sell them. Yeah. I think that was like the quickest way for me. Um, yeah. Are you familiar with micro flipping? Yeah, it's kind of where you partner up with other wholesalers, kind of things yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because because then all you gotta do is just source the buyers. Yeah. Um, so that's what I was doing, um, nice. and I found some success off that. I was making like thirty five hundred bucks a deal, which nice. is isn't a, like it's not a lot, but it's not a lot, but hey, super concept, right? Yeah. Um. So like that's what it was giving me when when I was doing it myself. Um, my first deal ever that I did was a probate deal. Um, found it off calling an, an old friend's an old, an old friend's list um, that he already went through, and the guy just happened to be ready to sell. Um, <clears throat> and we sold it on, and I sold it on Facebook Marketplace. So okay, no, like uh, it's no magic in it. It was just some effort. Yeah, that's beautiful. I love it. Yeah, that was that was perfect, man. Thank you. Cool, Justin. Thank, thank you. So, uh, Jameson, before we take the next question, yeah. um, you guys mentioned something I never heard of. So maybe we could touch on that for people that are new to real estate and watching the YouTube video. What's micro flipping? Yeah, micro flipping is when you find a wholesaler with a deal and then you bring the end buyer to the table. So let's say that wholesaler maybe has, has his deal for, um, you know, 100000 that's what he's trying to sell it for. He's got it at 90. And then you're like, hey, I, I can bring a buyer to the table for 105,000. Um, and then you assign, and then once you get a once you get on a contract from that wholesaler, you assign it to your buyer with spending zero dollars in marketing. And you made five thousand dollars just like that. Very, very, very cool. Now, for the new investor, because there are, you know, people that are new to this, how difficult is it to get going with that micro flipping? That micro flipping is the easiest method out there um all it takes is you reaching out to you know doing facebook outreach it takes it takes work um but it's possible um it takes work but it's possible so it's the easiest thing to do if you don't want to pay any money all you got to do is just reach out to wholesalers you know find people on you know go into a facebook group maybe you you know wholesalers always post their their deals in the facebook group message them hey uh you know send them a quick message like hey like um 
you know, get the details on it. Um, see if he wants to work with you. If he wants to work with you, see if you can bring a buyer to the table. And then, uh, you know, start, start hunting for some buyers. Um, the easiest way to find buyers as well, you know, just going into, you know, Facebook, like a random, random, you know, uh, Arizona, uh, Arizona real estate group, for example, and then just searching at gmo.com and you'll be able to find a ton of buyers as well. Very cool. Hi, my question is what does the Kegley business model look like? So when you buy into the franchise, what, what, what are you getting with it? Who's training your people? Are you doing like, like text campaigns, cold calling, all of it? What does the business model look like? Yeah. And then uh, you said something else as well before you cut off the first time. You were saying something about boardroom? Uh, no, I was just I happened to be uh, talking to another real estate investor uh, last night, and he had mentioned something because I hadn't heard of Keegley, but he had mentioned another franchise, uh, the name of another franchise, wholesaling franchise, and I can't remember the name of it. So that's why it's kind of a, it's kind of funny that I'm hearing about it twice within 24 hours. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, so like the motto is, <clears throat> um, the motto is we are a company that bases a lot of, we do a lot of agent outreach. Um, so that's how we're, you know, doing a lot of our deals, you know, it comes with some softwares as well. Um, and then the great thing about Kigley is that they are, we have an intake team that will source buyers for you. So basically it's more on the buyer's end as opposed to like the outbound marketing end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Keely doesn't do any okay. uh, marketing. They don't pay for any any marketing. Got it. Okay, thank you. Marcus, you are on with Jameson Williams. What's your question? Yeah, I just want to, I know he's doing a lot of development and building, so I just want to, you know, his story on that and uh, how he got started. So which, which project are you talking about? Uh, I think it was uh, like the 28 units. Or oh, yeah. units, I'm not so, sure. So, yeah, we're we're building 28 units here in um, Akron, Ohio. Um, how I got into that was, man, I got I said at the beginning of the, the pandemic, man, I was extremely ambitious. Um, <clears throat> I had the opportunity to connect with somebody that actually built my parents' neighborhood. Um, and I just let them know, man, like, hey, like, I'm, 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 I'm I want to develop. Uh, I want to, I want to develop. Um, so from there on, you know, over the past two years. We've been searching for land um, that that had everything that had had everything that we needed to build on it. Um, so we were able to get those plans together, get everything approved, um, and now we're going to be good to go um, to build on here um, when, uh, when when winter ends. That's when we're going to start building. Um, so that one was in Akron, Ohio. Um, Twenty eight units, six uh, town, six buildings, um, two six units, uh, four four units. And those are all townhouses. Wow, nice. Yeah, That's nice. So, yeah man, it, it it just can't. It just it was an opportunity, man. When you're taking action, um, you're you know you get plugged in, you get connected to people. I was we were doing. I was doing a lot of manual cold calling. Connected with uh, happened to connect with one seller who, um, who kind of like took me around the loop. Um, he did. He didn't. He said he had a package deal that he wanted to sell. He never ended up selling it. But he did connect me to uh, this developer. Um, so, I mean, that's always the, the number one reason why you build rapport with every seller that you're dealing with, because you never know who anybody is. I guess what I'd like to do is ask you a little bit. So you start with wholesaling and now you're doing multifamily or you're doing multi units on a larger scale or. Yeah. So uh, we're developing, doing fix and flips, uh, multifamily as well. We're, we're in the wholesale space with multifamily as well. Uh, that's a very great space to be in. Wholesale and multifamily is like swimming in a lake with only a couple with only a couple fish in it. Um, so I, 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 that's a that's a great place to be at. Um, yeah, that's that's fantastic. So when when did you get out of college? Yeah, I graduated twenty twenty. So like in a couple of years, you've just done this. Yeah. So I, <laughs> yeah, this has been my life the past couple of years. Uh, that's why I tell people it's, it's possible to do anything, uh, when, when you, when you, when you go all in, when you're two feet in. So uh, let me ask you, how old are you? Uh, 25. Brother, man, this, uh, you are truly an inspiration. You would understand this. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. You're an inspiration. You're a role model. You give hope and faith to, uh, everybody. 
because they can show the, the young kids that they can do it, which is great, you know, but the folks like me that are a little bit older, it's like, you know, um, you, you've just done it. You've just done it, you know, and, and that's, that's makes you an example for me, makes you a role model for me. Do you understand that? Yeah. Thank you. you know, I appreciate um, I, I talk about it all the time about relationships and people ask me, what am I doing for business? And, how come I'm not doing more deals? Um, time and circumstance necessitate that I've got other responsibilities, including I've got a few shopping centers. I have some things like that going on. But I've, I've started this machine called this Zoom call. And what it's allowed me to do is meet people like yourself and hear your story, hear how impressive you are. Uh, you you have earned a lot of respect from the community. I, and I see why. And I can tell you from the respect of every single person on this call. I'm sure you hear from your family. I'll just say it for your family. I'm proud of you, brother. I'm proud of you. You know, it's it's uh, what what we do as real estate investors is build, build relationships to build our business. And that's what I preach about all the time. You know, the importance of networking. Uh, we become the sum of the people that we hang out with, people we associate with. And, and I am honored to call you a friend. Um, yeah, man. But speaking for yourself, and I, I, I think I kind of know where your answer is go going to start and go towards. I'm going to ask the question anyway, but you've talked about making yourself known and getting out and knowing the market and seeing who's out there. But for the real estate investor, whether they're younger or older, new, a new investor, or one that's been doing it for a while but hasn't quite started to network, what is the importance of networking to the success of one's business? And what is it? importance of maybe joining a group maybe like the one that we have here to towards the success of someone's business yeah uh you know i say proximity is everything um but even like you know like i gotta say proximity is everything but having a paying to play changed my life and that's what i will say i'll say paying to play changed my life once you once you start paying for stuff you get in, you get into rooms where um you get into rooms where you're like Wow, everybody paid this to get in, um, or just like a community where you can connect with other people that are doing deals, like Astro Flipping or or Sub Two, um, and then you're around people that they've paid, so they want to execute, so they don't want to lose their money, and they want to they want to succeed. And I was always on people that be pe pe people that pay that uh, aren't going to succeed, but it just gives you a community, especially with everything being so virtual. Um, and you know, not that many more events are going on and anybody that sees this call later on, I, I do host a, I do host events in Cleveland as well. So if you guys are ever out here, I'm doing pretty good, uh, um, real estate networking events. Um, but just, just connecting, um, is, it's pretty, it's, it's everything. And I think it could change anybody's business. It can change anyone's life. Um, for me, it's changed my life just by connecting, um, joining groups, uh, diving more in, investing in myself um is everything if you're really looking to change the direction of your life very fast you know and and um you mentioned something i wanted to touch on what else are you doing you talked about you you host events tell us yeah. about the events you host and also for those that want to follow up with you those that are watching on youtube or maybe those that are on the call uh how does somebody you know contact you what's the best way to go about that it would be facebook instagram and and tell us about the events that you, you hold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for everybody on this call, I'll put my number in the chat. For everybody on Instagram, uh, for everybody watching on the replay, uh, just reach out to me on, on um, Instagram. Um, it is I-T-S-J-W-I-L-L. -L. That's it's J Will. Um, and then everybody in the, in the chat, if you guys want to reach out to me, um, I'll give everybody here on this call my number. You mentioned something about hosting events in, in Ohio? Yeah. So... Um, I just did my first event the other day. It was a pretty good turnout. Um, had it was sponsored by a title company and a lender here locally. Um, so it was a pretty good turnout. Um, and I got some more ideas to make it bigger. So, um, yeah, something pretty cool. Um, Pace and Jamil, they'll they'll be out here next year as well. So, um, definitely. Uh, if you guys are here in that that Northeast Ohio area, would love to connect with all you guys. That sounds fantastic. So, uh, you guys, if you guys are watching on YouTube right now, Jameson's presentation, please like the video and please put something in the comments in support of the video and 
the wonderful work that, that Jameson is doing. And if you guys are in the car right now, sticking around, we're going to go to breakout room shortly. And some of you guys may be able to be in a breakout room with Jameson himself. So don't go anywhere. Anyhow, um, again, if you guys want to watch more of what we're doing, you can find me at jjazizian.com or jjazizian on Facebook. And um, look for more stuff coming up on uh, Flipside with JJ. On behalf of Jameson and myself, we'll see you guys soon. Thanks for joining us. Over and out.